I wanted to show you the prototype of my new Lazy Lift Jack, um, that's what I call it. Uh, you can see here we have a standard single jack uh, that you can buy in many different places. Uh, many different companies make something similar to this. These work really good up to a certain point. Uh, what I've got here is a, a load of 525 kilos. And if you try and use one of these jacks to lift it, it's yeah. damn near impossible. Um, in fact, you'd probably find it easier just to unload the bar um, as it is. But with my new prototype, um, that bit of pink paper is where the heavy duty plastic is going to be going tomorrow. Um, with this, you can lift just about any weight. And um, I'll just show you here. It operates as you would any other deadlift jack. Just stick it underneath the bar and just give it a pull. So that's a single handed pull. Double handed, single handed. So again, this is 525 kilos. Uh, it's a barbell at both ends is loaded with 10 of these plates. Um, part of the secret here, if I can just undo this, part of the secret, um, as I was saying, is that this lifts it just enough off the ground. Whereas your commercial deadlift jacks, um, usually of this design, uh, they'll lift it up um, quite a few centimetres off of the ground. And in the process, it'll not just lift the bar up, it also has to pull it back so that the barbell doesn't roll forward. So it needs to be pulled back past the point of uh, tipping. As you can see here, it's just past the front foot. So it's just past the tipping point. So that's very stable. Unless you were to come up and actually jump on it, um, it'll stay there forever. But these jacks, they tend to pull the bar back quite a bit and they tend to raise the bar quite a bit. Now, you then have to overcome all of that weight lifting the bar up and forward again. And with these jacks, that's not quite as difficult as lifting the weight, but it's still quite difficult with a heavy weight. And it can also flick up and remove a testicle or a kneecap or something. Uh, so these here, uh, this prototype that I've made, it just brings it back past the center of uh, tipping and therefore it's pushing back down onto that foot and won't roll forward unless you were to go up and give it a big shove. And uh, it lifts it just enough off the platform to give you, say, a centimetre clearance, which is more than enough to put plates off and on. And as I said, this weight um, is half of 300, uh, 525 kilos uh, with a fully loaded bar. Now, you're never ever going to deadlift that, um, at least I hope not. And um, this is quite easily able to cope with the whole process. So that's the design. It's also uh, very light. These are about four, four and a half kilos each. Um, this is only about two kilos and very light. Uh, very compact, can fit into your gym bag. You can hang it up on the wall. You can hang it off a rack. Um, it'll store away in a drawer. It's um, very easy to to uh, use and to store. Um, you can, if you're not using anything over 350 kilos, you can actually reduce the height of that lifting bar to make it even smaller, but um, that's quite comfortable as it is. Um, I've cleaned this up ready for painting. Uh, tomorrow I will get some high density plastic and that will uh, go a little bit on the face here and then in the actual lifting cup itself. Um, <clears throat> all off, that just, uh, it really didn't cost me anything. Um, I had all the steel left over from other projects, but um, if you were to buy it straight up, it really wouldn't cost you more than 20 bucks to make. Um, even if it cost you 50 bucks, it's still cheaper than these uh, and a lot lighter. Now, of course, this is just for use in your home gym. Um, if you're running a competition, these won't do the job because you want a uh, lifting bar 
or a lifting jack with two lift points so that you can lift both ends of the bar at once so that uh, loading is faster. But when you're working uh, in a local gym or you're working by yourself in a garage gym, you're really just loading one end at a time. So one of these is enough. If you felt adventurous, you could have two <clears throat> and operate both ends at the same time. Uh, so that's my easy lift jack. It's my uh, little prototype. Seems to be working quite well. It's uh, very light, uh, very compact, and it works better than the standard jacks that you can buy at Rogue or Viking or wherever. That's it. Thanks very much. I'll um, post a pic when it's all finished and cleaned up. I'd like to show you here how I made this jack. Um, this is my first prototype, um, which I used just to get the angles. Um, you can see here that here's the front toe or uh, leading edge or the fulcrum point and it's in front of the lifting hook. So when it's in this rested position with the bar raised, um, this isn't going to tip forward because the barbell is behind the fulcrum point here. Now these pieces of flat steel I just put in different positions to figure out what angle to use. Um, and then once I got the angles, once I was happy with it, um, I then traced the outline of the main parts and positions so I could then make the, the uh, first uh, model. Uh, here we, we can see I've traced the lines of the main lifting bar, the, the, the barbell hook, um, there's a little curve here for the front toe, and this is the end position of this bottom foot. Uh, and then I put the pre-cut pieces in, and welded it all, tacked it all together and welded it up. Um, this angle here I changed. Um, I decided I wanted this foot not just touching at the back and at the front on the toe or the fulcrum point. I wanted the whole thing on the floor. So I changed this angle so that it uh, was, was uh, horizontal, lined up with the bottom edge of this fulcrum toe here. Um, this hook here that holds the barbell, this is quite important. Um, if you look at a commercial deadlift jack like the one that I've, um, or like the one that I made, the older version in, in this video, you can see that the actual lifting uh, angle iron is quite wide. Now, the problem with that, if you're just using one jack, when you lift the bar up and back, when, you, when the bar comes back, it actually twists the bar or it actually changes the angle of the bar. So if this uh, lifting point is too wide, it can actually dig into the knurl of your bar and cause things to try and shift around. So this needs to be quite narrow. Um, I made it the same thickness as the main lifting uh, lever here, which is 26 mil. This is 26 mil square section tubing. Um, and uh, so when you lift the barbell up and then it, then it has to be to roll back behind the front point, it, uh, front point here, fulcrum point, when it rolls back, it still twists, but this isn't wide enough to hit against the knurling. Um, so just to keep this narrow, you could actually just use a piece of steel rod uh, as long as it was strong enough. Um, speaking of which, once I had all of this welded together, or tacked up together, I put in two struts just to give it a bit more rigidity. I also put this um, cross piece on the end here to give it more stability on the floor because this hook and this lever has got nothing to do with the stability of the jack. It's all got to do with the front toe and the foot that comes back here. Um, I made this, I think it's probably about 65, meter, 65 millimeters wide. It doesn't need to be that wide I suppose but for heavy weights you want um, front and back stability just to make sure it sits on the floor firmly without twisting and without any wobbling side to side wobbling. Um, <clears throat> now with an Eolico competition barbell or an, any other good quality barbell the part of the sleeve that the, that the weights push up against it's actually quite thin it's only about 12, 15 mil thick. In a cheap barbell, the ends of those sleeves are very thick. Um, they can be, I don't know, 50 mil thick. 
um, or 60 mil thick. Um, so that means that this foot, um, if you are using a barbell with a very thick uh, end sleeve, um, this will never actually touch the plates because you, because you can't get it close enough to the plates. But with the Alico barbell and similar barbells with a narrow end piece on the sleeve, you just got to be a bit careful that this doesn't whack up against your plate and scrape the, uh, the paint off it. Um, so in effect, this little, uh, the barbell hook here will probably be about three centimeters away from the actual sleeve. That's not a problem. It's just something to be aware of. Your plate will never actually hit the foot because a, um, a standard plate is 450 millimeters in diameter. And um, so they're never big enough to, to hit this back foot here. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, so that's it. Um, it's very simple, very cheap to make. Um, I said in the other uh, previous video there that these weigh about two kilos. They only weigh one and a quarter kilos. And the traditional jack that I had, the red jacks that, that I showed you, they're actually almost five kilo, so it's a huge difference. This is very, very lightweight. Um, it's the weight of just over a liter of water. So, you know, you probably carry that in your bag anyway. So it's very, very lightweight. It's very compact. Um, you can hang it on the wall. You can stick it up against the wall. You can put it underneath uh, dumbbell racks. It's very, very compact. Um, it's cheap, simple, and... Um, I hope that uh, you can make something similar and um, save yourself all of the stress and strain in the gym. Thanks for watching.